All right, awesome. Uh, so how many here actually know about Hadoop? What is Hadoop and everything else? Because we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> no, no, just kidding. <laughs> All right, OK. So we're going to talk about Hadoop in the cloud and why it's uh, a big deal and everything else. Um, so our agenda, just to, like I said, uh, talk about exactly what uh, what Hadoop is and what is intercloud services. By the way, how many of you guys have already been tuckered out with the whole explanation of what intercloud is? Just raise a hand. No harm done. You're tuckered out. I get it. <laughs> I promise not more than one slide. <laughs> All right. So just a little just a little bit here. Anything I say or do in this session after it's done, it's irrelevant. <laughs> All right. So that's a standard disclaimer out there. All right, so again, talking about intercloud, again, in this case, what we're talking about is intercloud is a, a broader umbrella term, all right? In this case, there are private clouds, there's public cloud capabilities, and so on and so forth. And the key things that we're taking away from here is the fact that you're able to work across the cloud of your choice, addressing things around data sovereignty issues, control, compliance, uh, and your choice in this context. So in the broader sense, when you look at where Cisco Intercloud Services, the group that I work for, all right, we're building a private cloud focused primarily on the IoT platform, so IoT enablement, so things that are needed in that space. All right? It is going to be focused on self-service. It's going to be focused on leveraging OpenStack, so it's an OpenStack-based private cloud. Along with that, the intent around this is, depending on the kind of complexity you have and compliance rules that you have, you're able to move things around as and when appropriate, depending on your compliance needs as such. All right? Along with that, you'll be able to interface some of these with APIs, and then event and facilitate, if you will, rapid prototyping. I mean, that's the cool stuff. When you want to do innov innovative stuff, you want to do it fast, quick, faster, you know, better. So that's kind of what the focus of Cisco and Cloud Services is. And what I'm going to do is, it, we, I, I'm kind of going to tee off from why it is important. One of the best things about IoT, IOE is, it's not about just connecting sensors to the network. It never is. It's about getting the data from those sensors and then acting on it. And then uh, last year at the IoT World Forum, Cisco actually presented this um, as a, a reference model. It looks very similar to the OSI model, <laughs> all right? But if you look, as you move up, the level of reporting and the level of analytics, I mean, the intent, the, the value of analytics is incenting you to do something about it. It's not, you, you can continue having reports and everything else, but if you're not doing anything about it, it's absolutely worthless, all right? So there are various gradations of what you do with that data. There is just-in-time data, so when you get that data, you need to react. So imagine you're, um, you're, a, you're in an oil rig, and the drill bit's going down the ground, and it's sending out all kinds of telemetry data, and it's heating up, and you've got a critical threshold that says if it goes beyond this particular temperature, stop. All right? That's what edge analytics is, is that it actually t keeps looking at all the different data sources and tells you, hey, you're about to, you're about to reach a breaking point. You're not going to go all the way back up there and say, oh, by the way, the drill was supposed to break or it was going to break 30 minutes after it's already broken. All right? doesn't make sense. All right? Now, as you go forward, up, further up and up and up, the level of information analysis, the bottom line is here, this is just in time. But as you go up, you start looking at broader, broader patterns. So going back to my oil rig example, Let's say I'm seeing that a series of these drill bits are actually breaking across the Gulf of Thailand. What's going on? Now, edge analytics is not going to let me know that. <laughs> all right? That's where I move all the way up to the top, where I'm working with fluid processes, collaborating with other folks, getting data sets from different sources, and so on and so forth. A lot of this has implications for infrastructure on-premise and cloud as well. So when you look at how data behaves, all right? When you're down at this level over here, you're talking about things like data in motion. And these are kind of terms that you'll hear a lot when, when you know, you're building IoT, IE applications. There are data in motion analytics that you're going to be doing, and then there's data at rest. All right? Now, the line in here is actually blurring with all the innovation that's going on. A lot of the folks that were initially highlighted, like Hadoop in this case, that were pretty much strong with strongholds here are now providing tooling to allow a little bit of actually on this area as well. So you're able to now do things like in-memory querying a lot faster, quicker, better, versus a standard you know, MapReduce job, which is a batch-based batch uh, process in this case. So where do we fit in? So from a Cisco Intercloud Services perspective, as I mentioned, you know, we are building the cloud platform for IoT IOE. 
And in this case, we have components where we have different microservices, just like in the last session you heard. There are different components around cloud network centric networking. Go figure, it is Cisco, so we are going to be focusing a little bit on networking as it is. Along with that, certain types of application enablement tools, our service provider backbones. But the area that we're, we realize that's going to be critical for anyone, anyone implementing any kind of IoT, IU environment is one, is the data analytics platform. The problem with data analytics platform is one, um, is how to get started. And why is cloud relevant in that space? Uh, how, many of, how many of you here have actually implemented Hadoop? One, all right. So how long did it take you to go ahead and install the software? What did you do before you installed the software? <laughs> yeah, it takes a while, because you got to get the machine in place, the horsepower in place, figure out the data source, all that stuff before you actually install the piece of software. All right? And that's where cloud can help. All right? At the end of the day, your, your, your interest was not about getting the machine all set up and everything. Yes, the machine will happen, but you got to still prove a point. You're not going to ask someone to go buy multi-million dollars worth of equipment without trying it out. Right? And that's where cloud can help. So we're going to focus a little bit about on this space here. Now, what is the vision from an analytics standpoint for Cisco Cloud? At the end of the day, all of us want to go build applications. Right? That's where we're focused on. So in this case, I don't have, and mind you, if big data or anything related to big data, the skills are very hard to find. All right? So the area, the vision for big data that we want to go provide is essentially an integrated stack available on Cisco Inter Cloud Services. So you'll have Hadoop as a service, you'll have data ingestion service uh, as a service capabilities, data warehousing capabilities, data virtualization capabilities, all at managed scale for customers and people like yourselves and like myself to go build applications to business domains that are relevant to us. All right? So that's kind of what our overall vision is for what we want to be able to go do. Now, why, why is that important? So if I were to kind of double click on that a little bit and take it down a level, what does that mean? All right, so Cisco's big data, so when we start talking about things like big data as a service, there are three key things that folks like to do before they implement anything, all right? Whether it's Hadoop or anything, it's being able to provision it quickly, monitor it, and scale it. And scaling, the last piece is the most important part because you want to make sure that as you scale, your system is not going to break you're still able to ingest data from different sources and run the kind of queries you want to run and analyze information from all the different data sources. Now, one of the key things is we realize that as you look at this target, we start with Hadoop and then we start adding other things. Now, I'll be completely transparent with you folks. We're, we're building this capability right now. And the first area that we're focusing for our big data service is the data ingestion and the Hadoop as a service piece. We have internal pilots that are going on for things like data virtualization, machine le learning as a service, visualization technologies, and so on and so forth. Now, you've also heard about Marketplace. This is not Marketplace, right? This is a Cisco branded service, which will be, so anyone, if you have a problem with any of these tools on the stack, you call Cisco. Whereas with Marketplace, Cisco Cloud Service is merely a channel where you're talking directly to the vendor, and you roll your own. Here, the integration work has been done for you by Cisco. All right, so what is Cisco? So in our journey on that part, what is Cisco's uh, Hadoop as a service? Um, it's baked in, so we're, again, we're not, Cisco is not getting into the Hadoop distro business. We're partnering with Cloudera as our Hadoop engine. Along with that, we'll be able to provide templates and capabilities for customers to go deploy, uh, deploy uh, topologies, if you will, in the cloud for optimizing for batch and stream processing. We're going to first start off by looking at data ingestion with Ka Apache Kafka. And along with that, stream, uh, Spark streaming and um, the other tools that are part of the whole Spark stack, as it were. In addition, you'll be able to securely access. So using SSH to go directly onto a cluster, run queries, or use Apache Hue, uh, Hue to go ahead and run queries and so on, to web interfaces and so on and so forth to access your big data environment as such. And the other ability that we'll be able to go do is when you integrate uh, with our MetaCloud offering, you'll be able to go ahead and offload some work between your private cloud and public cloud, or CIS in this case, as you call it. Any questions so far? I, I don't like waiting to the end, so I usually prefer just, just feel free to talk. Plus, it's, it's a manageable crowd. <laughs>
Any questions? All right. OK. So does Hadoop in the cloud make sense? And this is the number one thing that you know, pe people who are hardcore Hadoop engineers, this is the part that kind of puzzles them. Why would anyone want to put, put Hadoop in the cloud? Because Hadoop runs on bare metal. And, and that's kind of the precedent that's been set in the market was, why would anyone be crazy enough to go do this? Uh, you don't have to take my word for it. Look at the market in general. By 2020, Hadoop in the cloud business, just Hadoop only in the cloud business is supposed to grow at 71%. All right? There's a huge market for it. And there are a lot of players that are coming into this. And it's primarily because, going back to the earlier statement that I made about rapid prototyping. All right? When you start looking at complex tools like Hadoop, the reason it takes a while to get them started. And, and if, if you're a line of business that wants to start looking at different things, how to be able to grab structured, unstructured data, be able to make sense out of it, you don't have time to create your own little data center and start putting stuff in. You can do that eventually, but you need to get started somewhere. And that's where cloud can help. All right, so why does it make sense? One, it helps you reduce the barriers to adopting Hadoop. Hadoop is just not one monolithic entity. I mean, you know, yes, you see this cute little yellow elephant as a symbol, all right? But that yellow elephant comes with a lot of things. There are several moving parts, all right? There is the HDFS file system. There is Spark for in-memory querying. There's Impala. There's Storm. There's Kafka. How do you make sense of it all? There's a reason why you have Cloudera, Hortonworks, and MapR out there trying to simplify this mess that's out there, all right? And again, when you're trying to go build something, you're not building because, oh, yeah, because Hadoop's the coolest, coolest thing in town. It's actually helping you drive an outcome for your business. How can, and in order to be able to go drive that business, if you have to go do X, Y, Z before you even get uh, working on writing a first line of code to, f to help you drive towards your outcome, you don't want to minimize that as much as possible. The other thing is, you can start running your dev test workloads on, in, in the cloud. And you can do your production deployment on-prem. You can start with that. Right? And that's an absolutely legitimate use case in this context. There's nothing wrong with it. And as a matter of fact, this has now become the more preferred model of actually building scalable Hadoop-based or analytics-based applications. Now, in addition to all this, why is our offering different? One of the key things is that when you start looking at things like Hadoop-based workloads, going from your own on-prem where you've gone ahead and implemented different types of policies, procedures, and so on and so forth, when you try to take it to a public cloud, ideally you would like to use some of that time and investment that you've put in place on-prem to at least replicate on a public cloud environment. And this is where Cisco's, Cisco's service can actually help. We'll at least make sure a lot of the policies that you have you are consistent between what you have in your dev test workload that when you go ahead and try to deploy on-prem, they're consistent. Again, minimize the churn. Any questions here so far? All right. So here's the other thing, and you know why I, why I started the pitch out by talking about big data in the cloud, all right? Because people don't consume just Hadoop in and of itself. It's part of a broader use case, all right? Here in this example, the customer that wanted to look at was uh, wanted to solve the problem of something called as preventative maintenance. What is preventative maintenance? Well, in this case, this customer of ours had a bunch of robots sitting on an assembly line, and these robots were sending batch data at the end of the day of all exception reports of that, that, that already happened during the course of the day. And so at the end of the day, they would get this set of, set of results and say, wait a minute, why was this robot malfunctioning? And now what they would have to go do, and if this, if this was in their own backyard, let's say in, uh, in, in Detroit, Michigan, then it's not a problem sending an engineer over or maybe having a truck load up a robot and getting it replaced. But if that auto plant happened to be somewhere in Vietnam and the robot misbehaved and they only get to hear it end of day here time, then shipping an engineer and then sh shipping a robot is quite expensive, right? So in this story, Hadoop is only one part of the broader thing. It's being able to connect those devices that are on-prem and be able to stream information from those devices on a just-in-time basis, all right? Now when that data comes in and I can start looking and saying, why is it the fact that all our robots across all these different car manufacturers in Vietnam are reporting the exact same problem, all right? That's where Hadoop in the cloud can also help. Sometimes if you don't have the time or the bandwidth to set up that entire infrastructure, you can leverage and offload it onto the cloud. You don't need to have actually all the, you know, the hardcore admin skills or the skills are hard to find. You can leverage some of the cloud capabilities for managed scale 
and focus on at least building the application in that context. That's one use case. And there are several others, by the way. The other use case, think about this. Every, this is something that we do every day. All of us surf, surf the web, don't we? All right. And this has been one of the primary use cases of Hadoop. Hadoop's genesis, if you will, was, in, was inside Google, Google search technology. They published a paper, Duck Cutting from Yahoo looked at that and made it, made it similar technology and made it available. All right? But in this case, if you look, there are different types of sources. And in this case, this is an actual internal Cisco project that's on Cisco Cloud right now, where they're capturing server logs when people register. So when they're calling our support line, they're looking at exactly the kind of interaction and touch points they have across the board through our website and other, other social media channels to make sure that when you call Cisco TAC, you don't start up from where, you know, they don't ask you questions of things you've already gone ahead and done. They'll start off from where you've left off, where you've literally said, okay, I can't figure this out. That's the intent and the purpose of this ex exercise of what they're trying to go build. And behind this, there's a set of tools and analytic engine. Again, Hadoop is just one piece of the puzzle here. Now, the interesting part about this group was that they actually had this infrastructure on AWS. So before we came in and said, hey, could you move the workload over to ours? They said, well, wait a minute. We're not, not that fast. <laughs> All right, we've got something working here. We're not going to let you, you know, just take it over just because you're Cisco uh, and you're one of us. We're not going to, I mean, there's, you know, when you're, when you're within the family, there's always some skepticism that the youngest one is going to turn out okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, and we happen to be the youngest one. We're a year and a half old inside Cisco. All right. So, they came to us and said, you know what, here you go. Uh, you know, this is our data set. This is how much we ingest in a day-to-day -day basis. Let's see what you can do, all right? And the, they, they actually kind of gave us a little bit of success, success criteria. They said, okay, you know, what can you go do? And by the way, this is what we've already got. So if you're anything less than this, we're not interested. And that's fine. You know, the, the, the culture that we're trying to breed even within Cisco is that anyone that's using Cisco Cloud internally acts just like one of you as a customer, right? Because that's the only way we're going to know what the experience is going to be. If the experience internally is crappy, we know exactly, hey, don't even bother taking it outside, <laughs> all right? So that's one of the things that we're trying to go do here. In this case, we wanted to make sure there was a successful synthesis of customer data, all right? Along with that, being able to gain a Gardner behavioral insights, as it were. Um, access to all the data discovery services that were already in place. And then along with that, they wanted to go ahead and run uh, Cisco data virtualization on top of CIS. And I'll talk a little bit about um, Cisco data virtualization and why was it important in this, in this context. So this is what we had to look for. One, we decided to kind of break this, make this a little bit more interesting. This was their existing infrastructure that was already running on uh, AWS. Again, nothing major, similar size and so on and so forth. And they were using uh, EBS for running their HDFS infrastructure and with whatever uh, relevant storage. In the case of Cisco Cloud perspective, the relevant sizing that we had was a GP2X large with eight vCPUs, uh, 50 gigs of uh, uh, root storage, another 1.5 terabyte of volume storage, so running on Cinder. So we had the same thing running on Cinder, but in, in our case, we had to put in 35 nodes. Now, mind you, just to give you an example, yeah, this flavor in Amazon, it took Amazon clearly four years to get that flavor out. We've only gotten this flavor out in a year and a half. So, and plus, I think we've got another 15 different flavors available of different types of VMs that you can use on Cisco Cloud. This is the number. Now, we broke it down into two cycles. Uh, when, you, when you talk about Hadoop, one of the big things you want to do is at the data node level, the worker node level, you want to keep the flavors or configurations consistent. So that was our cycle two. We had the configurations exactly consistent. Cycle one, we kind of a little, felt, felt a little kind of, uh, uh, experimental, so to say. So we changed the data nodes to different configurations and see how the data would balance and what kind of performance impact would we have. Just to, just to kind of, for grins and giggles, see what, it, what the results were. And if you can see over here, in cycle one cases, obviously things like the new cleanse, when the data comes in and cleans up environment, starts setting up, it takes, a quite, it takes quite a while. Just the whole setup process. But the fact is, considering to where we were before to where we are now, this is actually quite impressive. <laughs> All right. And as a matter of fact, when it came down to uh, our CCS 35 node cycle was actually pretty close to what Amazon currently had today. And that was a deciding factor for them to move over. So if I were to show you this in a, in a graph format, 
keeping the numbers consistent at the bottom. This is, this row over here is the 35 node cluster. And that's exactly a match. And by the way, the 30 node cluster is not that far away. It, it was still performing, but that was the one that kind of did them over. So, okay, yes, we can do this. And we're actually going ahead and benchmarking this inside internally with different other day data loads that we currently have uh, across the board in, in, in within Cisco Cloud. So in addition to that, um, they decided, no, let's make it a little bit more interesting. We're going to go ahead and have one cluster running over here, and we'll have another cluster running over there. We want to query both of them at the same time without moving data across. And it, thankfully, within Cisco's organization, we have a product called Composite, or now called Cisco Data Virtualization, where you can do that. You don't have to move data. You can leave data where it's at and run queries across the board. So as part of our pilot, in this case, what we ended up doing was putting this on the cloud as well and see how it performs. Now this is essentially, a, a, you know, the, the way people would use Cisco DV is running it on-prem, but we now are making it available on the cloud as well. And what you can do is something of this nature here. All right, there we go. This is the use case that we had. All right, so we have to go ahead and source information inside our Cisco cloud. We had a cluster running in AWS as well, all right? And we had a, a data, set, data set that we were sourcing in from within Cisco's IT organization. And without moving data from all these different sources, we were now able to transparently query them and figure out common patterns across the board. And the, the reason why they wanted to do this was see if there were any inconsistencies between our performance and the data that we gathered versus what was already there with Amazon. So again, this was again another proof point to validate, you know, it was not a bunch of uh, smoke and mirrors in a shell game saying, hey, we did better than, what, <laughs> better than whatever. Yeah, we're, we're not there yet, but we're definitely at a striking distance from a performance perspective. So what was my intent coming and talking about? It's not about just, you know, us thump, me thumping my chest saying, hey, we, we're there, because we're, we're far from, <laughs> right? My intent was here was, okay, if there are any opportunities for us to work with you, we are developing this. All right, and we're, we're making it available on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on the kind of use cases you want to work with. So if you're interested, you saw my email in the beginning. You have my name on the, uh, on the program, so feel free to reach out to me, uh, and we'll work it out. We'll figure out a way to get you in. All right? Uh, we're part of the broader Cisco play. I mean, one of the things I, I want to be very clear, we're not, we're not going after the broader hyperscale market. And what, I, what I mean by that is a public cloud for everyone and every, anyone. That's not what, we're, what we are. We're doing this primarily for the IoT, IOE space. So we are going to make sure that these capabilities are available to help you build better IoT, IOE uh, platforms, or applications in this case. That's, that's the area, areas we'll, we're there. The other thing is obviously, if, you know, as we are exploring options, trying to figure out, okay, what are some of the more popular tools that people are using for machine learning, visualization, reporting, analytics, as the case may be? If you have feedback, feel free to say it. Uh, by the way, I do appreciate a lot of candor, <laughs> all right? So if you need to swear at me, go for it. Make sure you have data, though, <laughs> all right? As long as you have information and say, yes, I, I, will, I will quietly take it, <laughs> all right? So the intent here is, my, my intent with you guys is to figure out if there's, a, if there's an opportunity for us to engage, and let's engage, all right? So with that, I know I have like five more minutes left, but any questions? Sure. All right. There we go. And uh, if you need my information, if you need my business card, just come on over. I'll give you. I'll give. I'll give them to you as well. There we go. Up, 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 up. There we go. <laughs> All right. I, I would even put my cell number there, but I'm told I'm not supposed to. <laughs> so if you want my cell number, I'll give you my business card. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess uh, we don't have questions. So thank you very much for your time. I really do appreciate you guys coming in. Thank you.